Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free Microsoft 7680 certification training course. This module is on updating Windows 7. I'm James Messer, and updating Windows 7 is probably one of the more important administrative aspects you'll have to think about when configuring Windows 7. We're going to look at configuring update settings. We're going to determine the source of the updates, how you can set Windows update policies. We're going to look at a way that you can now go back and review your update history. That'll be important for you administrators how you would check for new updates, and if there's a problem, you're going to also want to know how to roll back some of those updates. The Microsoft operating system is extremely broad, and there are a lot of changes that are always occurring in this operating system. You'll get updates to the operating system, updates to applications, OS security patches that come, that come out. You get driver updates for your computer. There's a lot of things that go into updating and keeping an operating system running at peak efficiency and at peak security. We also want to have a way that we might automate this. With so much going on, can we just make it so that I don't have to think about it? Have it automatically install whatever it is that I'd like. But that means we're going to have to set up and configure every aspect of that. Maybe you would like drivers. Maybe you wouldn't like drivers. Maybe you would like to update security patches. Maybe only security patches that are critical patches. You need to understand exactly how to go about doing that. And to complicate things further, if you are in an enterprise environment, you have to think about a lot of other things. You have remote users on their laptops that may not be in your corporate environment. In your corporate environment, you have limited bandwidth to the internet to download some of these patches. There are different reports that you might need to create that shows how many workstations in your environment are in compliance for a particular patch and other security concerns to think about. Well, fortunately, there are a number of things you can do in Windows 7 to address each one of these things, no matter what type of environment you might be in. The administration of these patches is a very important thing. And that's why if you ever want to go in and change the way that your Windows 7 system goes out and updates and changes the way it gets patches, then you need administrator permissions to be able to do this. You can also have this Windows update process that you'll find in your control panel also able to integrate with the Windows update service. And that is a central server that you might have in your environment where you put the patches on that central server, everybody goes to your server to get the patches. Imagine if you have a thousand people on your network all trying to use your internet connection to individually down patches on a Tuesday when Microsoft release, releases their normal updates. You could use a lot of bandwidth doing that by pointing everybody to a central Windows Update Service server, you can really make sure that all of that bandwidth stays local on your very fast network and you can use your internet connection for other things. If you want to check for new updates, you don't need administrator access. Anybody can check for new updates. You can do that from the GUI inside of that control panel and Windows Update. You can also do it using something called a Windows Update Auto Update Client, a W-A-U-C-L-T. Just have to remember to type in W-A-U-C-L-T to be able to do that. And if you use the slash detect now, it will look for that. Some people put that in a login script. So every time you log on, it's going to see if there are new updates out there. And now download those to your computer and be able to keep your system all the way at the latest set of patches and updates. Let's look at the updates on Daniel Jackson's laptop here. We're on this desktop, and I'm going to go to my Start menu. I'm going to choose Control Panel. And one of the options down here at the bottom is Windows Update. And if I click on that, you'll notice that Windows Updates are not turned on. They are not being installed automatically. Remember, if you want to make a change to how these Windows Updates operate on a computer, you have to have administrative access. And you can see it even has the shield there telling you that you can turn on automatic updates, but you're going to need authentication to be able to do that. So let's do that. I'm going to click on that, provide a username. I'm the administrator as well, so we'll use the administrator logon. And now we'll go out and perform that update check. Now we've modified the methodology behind doing this Windows update so that we'll now perform that functionality. And if you recall, we are also able to do that at the command line. So I'm going to do a CMD. I do not have to have updated or a higher level access to my command prompt to be able to do this. I do my Windows update automatic update client. And I choose detect 
now. And it will go through the process behind the scenes of also popping up that screen and updating that information. So very, very simple to get those things running. And I can either do it from the GUI or I can do it from the command line. In my case, it went out and said, wow, you got a 21 important updates. You have 34 optional updates. So we might want to learn more about what's important, what is optional, and some different things that we can configure in Windows 7 to decide whether we'd like to download those and install them or not. There are different categories of updates you want to look at. The first category are important updates. You saw in the update we were just looking at, there were a number of important updates ready. You really want to make sure you have these on your system. Generally, these are security updates so that if somebody knows a way or has a way to get into a Windows machine by installing this update, it would prevent them from doing that. It also prevent certain types of software from taking advantage of vulnerabilities on your Windows operating system. There are also recommended updates. They're not quite critical updates. They're things that you can put in a lower category, but they're still very useful to have. These might be operating system updates. They might be application updates. They may resolve certain problems with the way that an application works. It's not necessarily a security problem, but it may allow you to use an application in a way that was crashing previously. There's an application bug. This is probably how it will get rolled out. And optional updates you can find as well. These are usually just changes to a driver, maybe a minor change to a camera driver inside of your computer, or minor change to a sound driver. You might also see new languages in here as well. If you want to load up new language packs, you'll probably see them presented to you as an optional update. Back to our Windows 7 desktop, we know that 20 important updates are available. 34 optional updates are available as well. If we went and looked at some of these important updates, we have quite a few in here. Some are security updates, and we can click that and see these are security problems. These are qualified important updates. The important updates category in my Windows 7 also loads into it some updates like this driver update that technically are recommended updates as well. So it's lumping them together into this important category. Just so you know, these are updates you should really consider. The optional, the 34 other things that we have here are Windows 7 language packs. There's 34 of them. We could load up our Norwegian, our Portuguese, and our Russian language packs by choosing that option in our optional set of updates. You can see the important updates are automatically checkmarked for us. You don't have to go in and update those. The optional ones, though, are things that you would have to enable to have those updates installed onto your computer. So how do you decide then what your computer is going to do when these updates are available? You have some options available. The default and the recommended option is to install the updates automatically. Every time there's a set of important updates, put them on your computer. There's a good reason for that, and we saw with some of those security updates. You can also tell Windows to download the updates, but I'm going to decide whether I would like to install them or not. So you actually have to push the button to say, install those updates. It's not going to do it for you automatically behind the scenes. Another option is to check for updates, but let me choose whether to download and install them. This might be really helpful if you have a limited bandwidth. Maybe then only download the updates that are important for you, and then you can decide whether you would like to install them. You can have an option to never check for updates. Boy, that's a bad idea. Although if you're running something like a kiosk or a computer system that is self-contained that you never want to change at all ever, and maybe it's also a computer that's never connected to a network, that might be a, a, a valid option for you, but certainly not recommended on a normal workstation or a normal computer connected to the network. You also have an option to give me recommended updates the same way I receive important updates. So just as you saw them lumped together on our Windows 7 desktop, we would make sure that everything that is recommended is exactly going to be installed the same way that an important update is installed. And lastly, allow all users to install updates on this computer. And that is the default, but sometimes you don't want your end users installing updates. Let's make it so only the administrator can put updates on your computer, and everybody else is going to have to wait until the administrator okays those. You can make those changes on your Windows 7 desktop under Change Settings. And here is exactly where you can make those updates. Install them automatically, download, but let me choose whether to install them. Check for updates, but let me choose whether to download and install, or never check for updates. And you can see you have options to give me recommend the same way I get important updates and the checkbox to allow all users to install updates on this computer. So all of those settings you decide right here from this single change settings dialog box. And now you decide how your updates are provided to you and when they're downloaded and when they're installed. 
you may run into situations where there's an update, maybe a security update, a recommended update, or some other kind that you just don't want that one update to install. But you still want your computer to update all the other important or, or critical security issues on your computer, just not that one update. Maybe your internal support team has found that that one update breaks an important application that we have built internally. And we can't install that patch quite yet. So you do have the option when you're looking through your list of available updates to hide that update. And you will just not be asked to update that patch ever again. That's one way to take that update, set it to the side, and if later on you did want to have that update installed on your computer, you can unhide it and then be able to run it. If you're a standard user, you can't hide updates. Only an administrator is able to hide those updates. You can also go back and look at the history. What was installed on this computer? If you're trying to run your internal application, it keeps failing and you're wondering, did this person install that update that we know breaks this particular app? Let's go back and look at the update history and see if that patch really was installed. That might help me resolve this particular troubleshooting problem on this computer. You also have the option to uninstall any of these updates that you put on your computer. If maybe this person did install that patch and that one patch is the one that's breaking your internal application, you can go into your control panel under programs and features and you can take that one patch and just uninstall that single patch and then put the computer back to a configuration that is this just the way it was before, but just without that single patch in there. If you're a standard user, you cannot uninstall the updates. You must be an administrator to be able to do that. If we'd like to hide an update, we can look at any of the updates on our computer. And let's say that this update for Windows Explorer 8 compatibility view list is where our problem is. If I right mouse click, you've got an option to hide that update. And remember, you have to be administrator to be able to do that. So it prompts me and says, you're going to have to put in the proper credentials. And then I'm going to hide that update. It unchecks it for me. And now it's one that will not be installed on my computer. Now only 19 important updates are available. If you would like to look at hidden updates, you can go to Restore Hidden Updates, and it will show you all of the updates that you've previously hidden so that you can then check that one, look at it, see the details of it, and then maybe restore that hidden update by checking it and clicking the Restore button. Again, you have to be administrator to be able to provide those specific credentials on this, com this computer and allow that specific function. So now we're back up to 20 important updates. It's important as well that we understand what updates have been installed on this computer already. So we do have the option here to view the update history. And you can see on this computer, I've had two updates to my Windows Defender. I can see when they were installed, what the importance of those updates was, and did it work or not? Was it successfully updated? So if you ever need to go back and audit any of those updates, this is the place to go. If we realize that one of these updates needed to be uninstalled, we can do that again from our control panel. Let's bring up that control panel view. And remember, you've got your options in here for your programs and features. And you can, of course, all the programs that you've installed go in here. But you've also got the option here to view the installed updates. It's going to go through that update selection, look for all of the updates that have been previously installed. And then we've got the option of whether we would like to uninstall or change them. These are the updates that we've had on this machine. And many of these were added through a service pack. But maybe there's just one in here. Here's a knowledge base article. And that's the one that I'd like to uninstall. I can right mouse click and say, I would like to uninstall that update. And of course, because we are uninstalling an update, we also have to provide the proper credentials that is going to allow that. A standard user isn't going to be able to go through that process. And Windows is going to now go through the un uninstallation process and will let us know when it completes. You don't always have the luxury of being directly connected to the internet to be able to download these updates. So there are some other options available to you. One is your environment may have proxies available. You can go through a third device that's then going to perform the downloads and the functions to be able to get that information. Then it's going to provide that to you. Windows Update, unlike other applications that might run in your Windows 7 desktop, Windows Update does not use the settings that are in Internet Explorer to decide where this proxy might be. Windows Update may be performing different features. It may be going to an internal server, so it doesn't want to use the settings that you've configured inside of your browser. You need to use Web Proxy Auto Detect, something called WPAD, and you use that configuration when somebody gets their IP address via DHCP. This is also you can configure this through DNS settings, and you can take that setting and then that's the one that's going to be used for Windows Update. 
if Windows Internet Explorer does have the proxy setting that is identical to what you will use for Windows Update, you can simply import it. This is the command to netsh winhttp import proxy and your source equals IE. Then it will simply pull in the same configuration you're using for your Internet Explorer. But that's not something that's done by default. You must add that maybe to a login script or an update script to have it take advantage of those settings that are already inside of Internet Explorer. If your laptop doesn't even have access to the internet, someone may provide these update files for you on disk or a flash drive, and you need to manually install these MSU files. These are Microsoft Update files. And you need to use something called the Windows Update Standalone Installer, or WUSA, to be able to make that work. And if you're, again, a standard user, remember you can install updates. Generally, you're setting up a batch file with that WUSA.exe, then the name of the update file, and it can update those behind the scenes at a command line and perform whatever functions it needs. So if the user is not able to directly install using the MSU file, you can always do it using that WUSA right there at the command line. And here's a command line that you might use to run in a batch file or run at your command prompt on your computer, the WUSA.exe. You would specify the location of the MSU file. Here's one that's for Windows 6.1, the Knowledge Base Article 7654321. I just made one up to show you what that would be like. And you've got two options at the end of this. You can do a slash quiet, which means it all happens behind the scenes and the user doesn't see anything. And perhaps even more important, you can say, don't restart after this update is there. That way, if somebody's doing something on their workstation, it's not going to manually restart their computer until they decide to do it. And normally, if you have a lot of different patches to install, you would have all of these set up with the quiet, no restart, quiet, no restart, quiet, no restart. Maybe on the last one, you would just put slash quiet, and it will prompt the user, OK, we have patches ready to install. Would you like to restart your computer? That way, you're not prompted every time one is installed just to have the computer restart after every single one of those. That would be horrible. But being able to control that at the command line means that you get to decide that. We talked earlier about using the Windows Server Update Services. WSUS is how you'll see this abbreviated. And that can really save you a lot of bandwidth because now all of your users are going to a central server to get all of those patches. The administrator also now has control over when your machines go out and get their updates. So you can group together certain parts of your organization because it's all integrated now into your Active Directory. And you can decide the marketing department gets their updates on a certain day. If that goes OK, maybe we'll update the engineering department. If that works well, maybe we'll have three or four other departments go out and get their updates the following day. You can also roll back everything. If suddenly you decide, ooh, one of those patches breaks an app, let's now have it automatically roll that particular patch out of everybody's computer, and it can be done centrally using your Windows Server Update services. Of course, all managed through group policy, so it makes it very, very easy to roll out these updates, pull some of these update ba updates back, and really manage everything in an enterprise in a very large environment. To administer these update policies, we of course do it through our group policy updates under Computer Configuration Administrative Templates, Windows Components, there's an option there for Windows Update. And you'll specify in there where your Microsoft Update service location is. Point it to the proper server that's inside of your network. You also want to enable client-side targeting. You can group those computers together and so that you can target just the marketing department, just the engineering department, so you can roll out and coordinate those updates however you'd like to do it. You can also set a requirement to allow signed updates from an intranet Microsoft Update service location so that you yourself could even create your own internal updates, sign them with a certificate you've built internally, and then your end user workstations can take that configuration and run it just as if it was a configuration update that came from Microsoft. If you have patches and updates that you'd like to roll out, that might be an option, especially in a really large environment. There are a number of group policies you can configure when you're doing these centralized updates. Again, in your computer configuration, your administrative templates under Windows Components and Windows Update, and you've got all of these different options available. Turn on software notifications, to allow automatic updates to immediately install, and here's the one to allow signed updates from an entity other than Microsoft, and you'll want to configure that if you're doing updates for yourself. Let's review some of the topics we've covered in this updating Windows module. Our first question, it's a true or false question. Regular users can install updates, true or false. 
Well, if you recall, you have to be an administrator to make changes to the update process, but regular users can absolutely install all of those Windows 7 operating system updates. The next question, how can you exclude a certain update from the update process? Well, if you recall, if you ever run into a situation where you just are never going to want a certain update to bother you and tell you that it needs to be installed, you can hide the update. And again, you have to be an administrator because that is a change to the update process. And of course, later on, you can go back in and unhide that update if you'd like. And the last question, which group policy allows you to specify the location of an internal update server? This was a group policy that was in our Windows Update section, and it was one that specified the intranet Microsoft Update Service location. That will be an especially important one to configure if you set an update server to work inside your intranet. That covers the requirements we have for updating Windows 7. We've gone through configuration, the source of the updates, configuring the policies, all the way to checking and rolling back some of the updates for our Windows 7 operating system. If you'd like to watch many other videos that we have for our Microsoft 7680 certification and much more, you can visit our website at ProfessorMesser.com.